Tools and welcome to this um, Pixelmat tutorial. In this Pixelmat tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a Beats logo desktop background. Basically, I was messing around with some iPhone um, iPhone 6 backgrounds or lock screens, so I will um, I will upload them very soon when I've finished doing sort of a, a group of five and, and I'll give them away free. But in the meantime, I'm going to show you how to um, how to make the Beats logo. It's really simple. And um, so yeah, the, this project, the properties are 1920 by 1080. That's 1920 by 1080, and that's just a nice um, generic background size. It will it will um, generally downscale quite nicely and fit most wider screens. So we, um, when we've got a 1920 by 1080, our new new document or new project, I press Command minus on my keyboard just so I can um, I can zoom out and see the whole of my canvas. Um, it's quite simple this. And it shouldn't take too long. Get my paint bucket tool. So I'll go to my tools, command and one to hide and show tools. Paint bucket tool right here. And then I'm gonna want to um I'm gonna want my colours. So I'm gonna press up command or shift command and C and it will show my colours. Now I've got this this nice colour that Beach use quite a lot right here. And um, if you want to look at the web code, so if you go to web colours, if you just type in this code right here, that's hash B92832. Hash B92832 be somewhere on the screen. You will get this this nice colour. And once you've got it here in this little um, paint pot, just drag and drop it to one of these spare um, favourites placeholders right here, and that will um, that will save. So then you can go to any colour, select your paintbrush, just go to your colour, and then select that colour, and it will be there for you. The next thing is we're going to want to make the logo. So I'm going to go to my tools and select my selection tool or my move tool. So go to my shapes and hold shift and it just allows you to manipulate the shape a little bit better. So you see that we've got this sort of shape with reflections and colours that we don't want so I'm going to have to change this in my styles and that's command 7, command 7 to hide and show your styles and then in this fill drop down we're going to go for a colour, on the stroke we're going to go for none, on the colour we're just going to select black, so I'll go to our crayons and select this licorice or this black colour right here. And then we're also going to go back to our styles and remove the reflection that I've got. So if you've got in a shadow or anything like that, just deselect it. So we just want a, a standard black um, sort of tile right there. And I'm just going to drag, drag that into the middle, so I get my grid lines right here, look, drag it into the middle. And I'm happy with that size, but I can change the size later if I want to. I'm going to go to my shapes in my layers. I'm going to right click and duplicate that shape. So copy that shape. I'm going to go to my colors right here. So I'll click my colors on my styles tab and select the color that we chose before. Remember the web colors that we chose before? Our B92832. We saved it to our favorites. Choose that color right there. And then we're going to drag that down and make it smaller. Again, you could hold shift if you want to just to keep it. But I'm not, I don't want to too much. I'm just going to drag it down um, so it's so it fits nicely into the center like so. And so you're, you, you roughly know that the beat size, but it'll be around this size. Now there's a couple of ways that we could do this. I could actually use this shape here and just do an outline. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Or we could copy the shape again, make it black, so we've then got the center. I would prefer to do it in the styles. Go to my um, stroke change it to colour, click, click that colour um, placeholder right there and then select our favourite colour or our colour that we've put into our favourites. Go back to the fill and select none. So now we've got the outline, it's called the stroke right here, the outline of that circle. Now I'm going to do is drag the width up with this slider right here. to a size that I'm happy with, 48 pixels. Now it might be a little bit different on yours, dependent on the size of the circle. So once I'm happy with that, I'm gonna to go to my tools again and get myself a rounded rectangle tool. The reason I'm going for a rounded rectangle tool is because it fits better on this, um, this circle than the square or just the normal rectangle shape. Select my rounded rectangle tool, go to my styles, my fill, make it a color, and my stroke, just make it none. And then I'm going to drag out the shape or rough shape of the B that it matches and just manipulate the shape 
so it fits nicely onto the circle now if yours is let me just copy these two just for a second now if yours if you've placed yours say here for instance all you're going to need to do is once you're happy that you've got them sort of merged you've got the shapes merged and you're happy with the shapes don't drag it or manipulate it too much once you're happy with the shape you're saying yep that's the if you need to use the arrow keys just to move it um, slightly less then do so left and right arrow up and down arrow keys so once you've got both the shapes and you're happy with them highlight them both in your layers pane and then drag them to a place that you're happy that they're gonna sit Mine are going to sit right here like so. So if I deselect those shapes and then I look at them. Am I happy with where it is? Not exactly. So what I can do, I'm going to highlight them both. And just use my arrow keys and move them left slightly. Because that's where I want to move them. And then down a little bit. Until I'm happy with them. Am I happy with where they're placed? Yes, I'm quite happy with where they're placed. But what I want to do is resize this outer shape just to make it a little bit smaller and then drag it so it sits nicely like so. So I've manipulated the shapes. I'm going to highlight all the shapes. Right click and group. Double click that group name and call it shape. So now I can move these shapes with the group all together and it's all good. So once we're happy with this, right now there's a couple of things that we could do underneath. We could write the Beats Audio, and I'll show you how to do that quite quickly. Right, we'll go to Text, select a text. Now, the text that you're going to want to get, and it's from a place called 1001fonts.com. I'll put it in the description. I'll also put it on the screen. But the, the text that you want is something called Opifico. And I've used it before in a um, in, in a, in a tutorial, and it's, it's, it's a really nice text as well. Remember, it's all lowercase in the Beats. But it's totally down to you, you know, how you want to use it. And um, and the beats is generally the white text. So we highlight the text. Go to our colours. Up, Command and C. To show our colours. I don't know why it's not going white. There we go. But we're also going to need to resize this text. It is quite small. And let's go for a 48. Yeah, 48 will match this size quite nicely. And then I'm going to right click and duplicate that text. So I don't have to mess about with the size and just call that audio. And I'm going to highlight the audio and change that to black. Drag it next to the beats. I want the audio to be a little bit closer to the beats text. Because if you notice, if you look at the text, it will be very close. And I'm going to highlight both the text in my layers pane. Right click and group these. Double click that group and call it text. So now I can move them together, manipulate them together. So that is our basic sort of, um, our basic beats audio background. You just export that out now and save it um, as, as your desktop background. And that will look quite cool. Another thing that you could do, you could... Um, with this text we could go to our styles layers and we could add we could select them individually open the group and we could add a reflection which would look quite nice I suppose on both of the texts so you add the reflection and that looks quite nice um, let's remove um, in fact let's remove that reflection because personally if I wanted to duplicate the the beats exactly I wouldn't I would leave it as we are now as at this stage and that's exactly as it is um, let me just... okay so there's something else that we could do I'll turn this text off and I'm going to go to my shape here right click that shape open my shapes right click it and duplicate now I'm going to want to take the shape copy outside of this group so what you have to do is drag it below the group till you get the blue line and then move it left slightly and you'll see the line move left and the shape group will unhighlight itself see and then you know it's outside of the group and then you can minimize the shape again so we've got the shape copy below it's important that it's below our shape group now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna convert it into pixels and I'm just gonna move it off down here like so I'm then gonna double click our Gaussian blur 
and I'm going to drag this Gaussian blur up on that shape quite high. Click OK, and I'm going to move the shape below. And now, if you left it like this, it will give it quite a nice sort of um, sort of a blurred reflection, if you like. But what I'm also going to do, I'm also going to double click my zoom, drag my tile down below the beats. And again, this is personal preference, and drag the zoom up if you want, or drag it down like so. And again, this just increases the blur or increases the reflective blur of the beats. But like I said, that's quite nice as well. If you added the text to that, it wouldn't look as good, so you'd have to move the text somewhere else, maybe to one of the corners. Um, like so. But what I would personally do, I would leave it as normal and remove this blur, and I would just have the Beats, um, the Beats logo as it is. So yeah, export that out, and I hope this has give you some good ideas. You could even add, if your name's Stephen, Tom, Lucy, whatever, you could add the L into this and have Lucy Audio or, you know, whatever, just be a little bit creative for that. So I hope that helps you out, and I hope you um, enjoy that background. Look forward to them iPhone 6 um, backgrounds or wallpapers, lock screens coming up and uh, yeah.